Welcome back. In this episode, we are going to be learning about observing children, a tool for assessment. Observation provides vital information about each child's needs, interests, abilities, behaviors, and learning styles. Most of what is known about child growth and development is a result of some form of observation. Assessments are the process of observing, recording, and documenting children's growth and development. They should be appropriate for each child's age and developmental level and should address all developmental areas. If you'll look over here where the television is on your screen, you will see a PowerPoint that's called Observing Young Children. If you will click where it says click here for video, you can come back later and view this PowerPoint. So you just click here and it'll take you straight to the YouTube video. It's about a three minute video. There's no, there's no voiceover, just um, opportunities for you to watch children, see some pictures and actually reflect on what it is that you see that those children are doing. So make sure you come back to that slide. So I'd like for you to join me, Mrs. Murph, as we learn all about observing children a tool for assessment. The first objective is to identify the importance of using assessments as part of teaching young children. Information and data from assessments inform teachers in, about children's developmental status. During assessment, teachers gain insights into children's learning styles and their needs. What are their strengths and weaknesses? What does the group know? What are they able to do? What are their interests? What are their dispositions? What are their needs and how should they be grouped together for instruction? Teachers who have good assessment skills will make better decisions and plan an intentional curriculum. The assessment method depend, that you choose depends on the type of behavior you want to assess and the amount of detail that you need. No single assessment will provide an exact assessment of a child's ability or performance, which is why it is important to use a variety of assessment measures. Assessments through observation can identify individual student problems, classroom problems, identifying children with a possibility of special needs, finding out where children are developmentally, and evaluating your program. The information gained through ongoing assessments should be used to guide your classroom practices and shared with families on a regular basis. Observation is the intentional act of carefully watching a child's behavior in a particular setting. Two different methods are used for observation, formal and informal. Formal methods include standardized tests and research instruments. Some um, standardized tests that you might be familiar with are like the ACT, uh, the ART, those kind of tests where there's a timer. Uh, so think back to when you were in high school and you had a certain amount of time to complete a certain number of questions and it was very rigid. Those are formal assessments. An informal method includes observing children, collecting samples of students' work, interviewing parents, and talking with children. Informal methods are easier and more appropriate to use for program planning and preschool teachers typically use these methods to collect data. Several types of assessment tools are used in early childhood programs. These include anecdotal records, checklists, participation charts, rating scales, documenting children's work, portfolios, and interviews with parents. The simplest form of direct observation is a brief factual narrative of a specific incident called an anecdotal record. It's important that anecdotal records be objective, stating actions, not generalized feelings or motives of why something happened. 
One thing I like to tell people is when you're observing children, you're using your eyes and your ears as if they are a video recorder. So all you write down in an anecdotal record is exactly what you see and exactly what you hear, okay? You do not put your generalization as to why something happened into the anecdotal record. You just write down what you saw and heard. After the data is collected, it then needs to be interpreted. The observation itself serves absolutely no purpose without interpretation of behavior to give meaning to the data. Another form of assessment is the checklist that is designed to record the presence or absence of a specific trait or behavior. A participation chart can be developed to gain information on specific aspects of children's behaviors like to help you determine a child's activity preference during selected self-selected play. So you may watch them and say, do they go to the dramatic play area uh, or do they go to the writing area, do they go to the listening area? And you would check it off how many times over maybe the course of a week when they go to each one to see what their interests are. Rating skills are used to record the degree to which a quality or trait is present. Documentation is collecting samples of children's work systematically over time so that you can show the evidence of progress and growth. Documentation can also be collected through the assistance of technology, like maybe photographs of the child doing something, audio or visual recordings. A portfolio is the collection of materials that documents a child's abilities accomplishments and, pro and progress over time. It can include any type of assessment and much more. So typically once you've documented, you, whether you're using work samples or audio or video recordings, you compile them into something called a portfolio. During your study of young children, you will observe them in many situations and certain guidelines must be followed. When you gather data about children, you must use special care. Professionalism is the key. Treat your observations just as you would a job interview. You should dress appropriately. If you're a, um, during the time when you're a Wallace student, you should be wearing your Wallace student uh, ID or some kind of identification that lets the uh, school or the teacher know that you're from Wallace Community College and you should be punctual. If you're supposed to arrive at nine, you need to be there at 8.55, sitting and ready. The information you collect must be kept confidential. To protect confidentiality, I suggest only using first names of students or creating a faux name for them in class discussions and or assignments. Personal belongings, including cell phones, should not be brought into the classroom as they may create an unnecessary distraction as well as a potential hazard. During your observation time, avoid talking to the children or the staff. You cannot observe when you are in conversation. However, it is likely that your presence will spark the curiosity of some children and they may ask, what are you doing here? Answer in a very matter of fact way and say something like, oh, you're right. I'm just writing notes to see how children play. I'm a student and I'm just coming to watch how you play. And then ended it that. So now let's review what we've learned. Assessment is primarily used in planning developmentally appropriate curriculum to advance children's development and learning. Most assessment methods involve observing children. There are several types of assessment tools that are used in early childhood programs. Materials that have been collected during the assessment process should be collected in a portfolio for each child. By observing children and recording their behaviors, you will become a better early childhood professional. You must follow the guidelines for observing children with the most important one being information that you collect on a child must be kept confidential. So this wraps up our episode. You can learn more about this topic by reviewing the resources posted in your Blackboard course. As always, if you have any questions, please contact me. Mrs. Murph, thank you for joining me as we learn all about observing children, a tool for assessment. See you next time.